I need to make sure we are plugged in to the ethernet. Hold on one second. It's sort of like my fail proof. Oh, I'm a little bit of a mess. Hold on, it was very windy outside. <laughs> ignore, ignore my bangs. I need to go trim them myself, I guess. Um, how are you guys doing? Happy Thursday. I have to laugh. Yesterday, I was looking at the comments. Maybe I needed to go like this. Wait, how do I do this? Let's do like this. No, I gotta do like this. Okay, yesterday I was reading the comments. Um, and do you see this tree behind me? All right, so the tree behind me right here is a fiddle fig tree that is so big. I would say it's 20 feet high. And so that side of my studio, well, actually both sides, it's a huge, um, it's, it's like a story and a half and the roof goes this way. So it gets smaller on that side. And the fiddle fig tree I had when I lived in San Francisco over 20 years ago. And it was just like a little cute fiddle fig tree and I brought it here and it was in my living room for a long time. And then when we built this art studio, we put the tree in the art studio. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so hot. Hold on one second. Woo, I need to open. I need to have a little tiny bit of air. You might hear my boys out there with their friends, hopefully. Hopefully not, they're playing a game, they're very loud. Anyway, the fiddle fig tree behind me was one of like my favorite things in the art studio. And it loved it in here and it grew and it was gorgeous and it was so big and it was like a statement piece. It was like a big piece of, um, hi Suzanne. It was like a big piece of art, this fiddle fig tree. It was over there. Then last year, my husband put in a gas heater, little tiny gas heater in the studio on the wall down below. And one day, probably, I don't know when, maybe a month ago, I walked in my art studio. I think I had been to Buffalo. I don't know exactly. I was out of town and I come home and almost every leaf had fallen. Over 30 leaves were on the ground of my art studio. I was so, so, so sad. This is not my chat today, by the way, I, but I was so sad. So I, I, on my own, took that tree, brought it over here. I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if we can do this without messing up my hole. Let's see, let's see what happens. Hold on, I'm gonna show you. Let's see if I can, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, do you see it up there? All the leaves are gone but it loves it at the very, very top of the ceiling. It's doing great. And the reason why all the leaves are gone was because of the heat was rising and it was just like killing all of the leaves. Well, here's the funniest thing. Whenever I do my Zoom call and I sit right here in the middle, <laughs> it looks like an antenna. Okay, so I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna sit here. That was my whole point of my story, it looks like an antenna. All right, just for that, we're gonna have a sip of tea. How are you guys? It is Thursday. I've had such a good day. I had a really fun Zoom meeting this morning at lunchtime with my Bloom membership. We had such a great conversation. It's There's 50 women in there. We just really to sell their work in different ways and formats and it was awesome so i love that and my boys are home and it's beautiful outside and i'm my husband's building me new flower beds so things are good and but i wanted to talk about shapes today so yesterday i talked about color and i did look at some of the i looked at all of your comments on the different colors that you were talking about and there was one who wrote about how how, how about this co combination dusty it was dusty rose and like a light silver sage and things like that mm, together that combination so beautiful so when you're thinking about your color add a little neutral to your colors like a little white or something like that and then see how they look together i bet they're awesome so what i wanted to talk to you today was about shapes and if you have been, if you're on my Instagram, I've only posted on my Instagram. I'm thinking about putting it in an email. I think I'll put together like even a little reel of all of them. But one thing I started doing 
over the last few weeks to maybe a month and a half was in the morning when I'm completely quiet. And I talked about this on like the second day I was live on this tea chat was about, I'm just painting circles. And circles have, are something that I have been painting for a long time. And I love the shape of a circle, whether it's a little oblong or off. I'm gonna show you a few things. And it's because they remind me of so many things in nature, you know, sun, cells, but also flowers. And I love taking a flower apart. And I think I might do that tomorrow even with some shapes, but the circles themselves are not only really fun to draw, they're very like flowy and it's a very meditative thing. If you start to draw circles as a shape, over and over and over again, it's a really calming thing to me than doing like a box. Um, so I have this beautiful little journal that I got in Italy when I was there and I was thinking like, hmm, how do I get more of these? Cause I'm gonna fill this thing up and I'm gonna want another one. They're so soft, it's like butter. I started doing the circles, not on the very first page, Hold on. I started doing the circles. <laughs> it started like that, but then these quickly turned to circles. And it started, whoopsie, hold on. Got like fiddly thumbs today on this page. So I just, in the morning, would do these things. And then it's evolved a lot since I've been doing this. Like a little, do it like this, like a little show and tell. Sometimes it's, that's it. That's like, all I want to do is just paint. And when I'm painting, I'm either looking out the window. It's very early. It's like 6 a.m. Or I'm listening to a podcast or an audible of some like mindfulness, um, some beautiful, something beautiful. And then I just, depending on the time, I would go in with my little watercolor brush. I only have one brush. That's the thing too. When I'm, when this stuff is in the kitchen and it's this book and a couple little travel um, watercolors and one brush, that's it. I only have one brush for everything. And some days they're like double, but they're all these circles. And what I try to do is pick one or two color combos. And they need a little tea, hold on. Oh, I need a little tea. Aren't those so beautiful? just those colors too. So this was like two color pinks I have in my palette. And then sometimes they would dry and I would go over them. Um, this was probably like one day. I can pretty much tell like this was one day, maybe this was another, the greens were slightly different, but I love even those, those colors all together. And depending on, you know, if I'm sitting around and I really don't wanna stop what I'm listening to, I'll just make these little tiny marks with my watercolor brush and I actually really like that I think I showed that on this one I think I've shown that one before but they are just so much fun I want you to try this you don't just show it to anybody it's just for you look at this color gold this is a gold that I got in Florence look at that that is a paint, that's a watercolor paint. Isn't that just absolutely beautiful? Um, okay, so anyway, these are the last few days, just the greens and then that's like so not my palette at all. And this is what we were talking about yesterday, like you find colors you love. Well, I know I'm probably never, <laughs> I'm probably never gonna do a painting with just these colors. But these colors to other people, they love their colors. So it depends on what you like. But I do like some of the yellow and this orange together. I'm not 100% sure if I like this kind of a dark plum. I'm not too sure if I like that. But I know that whenever I paint with the blue and the purple, it just sings to me. Like this is my happy place. I love magenta and I love blues. This is nice, but I don't love it. So I want you to think about that. Uh, wait, I have another one, another one of those blues. Yeah. So I was thinking how much fun would it be to just paint something like that in, you know, this palette even. 
And then giving yourself a limited palette is a really fun thing to do too. Um, okay, so that's my recent circles, but if I kind of go back in time and think about when did I start like thinking about these circles, is probably when I came up with layered petals. The layered petals is one of my favorite classes that um, I have on my site. And a lot of them came from just painting circles and using the flower as my inspiration, like a, what is it called? A ronculus, I think, or a peony or a rose. And where it was, even though it doesn't look exactly like a rose, it's a sort of a whimsical abstract version of what I feel is a really fun rose flower and it's all these circles. So I was doing this a few years ago over and over and over. I mean, how funny is that? Like it's just, it's very calming for me. So I think you just have to find like what speaks to you, what's calming. These were all done with acrylics, mind you. The other ones were done with um, watercolors, the ones I do in the morning. Um, but they're fun. It's just round and round and round. So then I started doing other things. So I can't remember which was first. Hmm, I can't remember which was first. Oh, well. so then these circles just keep showing up in my life. So this is a big piece of raw canvas. It is the monster circles. So this piece of raw canvas I painted on and I loved how it turned out. Like I'm trying to figure out like what to do with it. It still hangs in my um, studio. It's the colors of, um, they're a little wild, can you hear them? It's the colors that I love that sing to me. It's the rounded edge, they're not perfect. It's just round and round and all of that kind of movement and the simplicity of it came from just sketching them over and over and over again. So I want you to think about shapes today and think about like, is there a shape that you love to make, to do? Like, um, it may not even be a shape as much as it's a line. It could be that you always do little tiny lines or crosses or um, long, skinny, you know, angle things, whatever that would be. But I want you to think about what is the shape that you do all the time that you seem to like doodle on and that you love to make? I want you to keep on making those. This was another one. This was from Color Play. But look, here are those circles again. <laughs> I could do a total show and tell of the art studio of all the circles. Just round and round. And then sometimes the round would become like more oblong. Sometimes they are... Um, round with inside shapes. And then what was starting to happen was the round shape became more of like an arch in some areas, which was really fun too. So I want you to, I want you to think about shapes and lines as their own thing and how could you incorporate them into your work or how could you use them just as practice or how could you just meditate and just not meditate with your eyes closed while you're doing them, but use it as a form of, I'm just going to repeat it over and over. I'm just going to make that circle over and over and over again on one piece of paper, do a little line, and then start to figure out like, what are the lines that you love to make? Um, I'd love to know. So you guys could let me know in the comments, what is your favorite shape? So yesterday was, what is your favorite color? Today, I would love to know what is your favorite shape? And then I think tomorrow I am going to do a little show and tell on some of my favorite shapes in nature and stuff. Um, I love your circles. I love the spirals. Yeah, there's something about circles. There's a lot you can say about a circle. There's the circle of life. There's just the cell, biology cell is a circle. A lot of flowers have a circle. Um, and then what you can do is you take a realistic thing and this is how you can start to turn it into something abstract in your art, in your abstract work, is that your um, what you wanna represent 
could be a shape and that shape could end up being in your work as either, you know, you have lots of different circles and they're more abstract, but it could be your way of um, painting flowers. It could be your way of painting whatever it is. And it's really, really interesting. Sometimes I don't even think about it and then I keep seeing it. And so if you're brand new to art and you're just getting started and you're dabbling and you're practicing, it's not like it's all of a sudden gonna show up. For me, it's been years of what do I always go back to? And then there's this, um, I gotta get her name right, um, Ardith Goodwin, and I will link to her. She's a fabulous artist. You should all check out her work. I was listening to a podcast about her one day and she, oh my gosh, she's so amazing. And she was saying one of the ways to find your style and your voice is to think about what you love to paint and draw as a kid. And if you had any art, if any, if your parents saved any of your art or you saved any of your art, are there things in your art that you can that you see in your art today? It's really interesting. Um, it's just one way to sort of connect the dots of why you keep doing something a certain way. Sometimes it will show up in your early childhood work. And Ardith talks about um, using that work as a sort of beginning stepping stone to really figure things out. Ardith always talks about too, about practice. Like the more you practice, the more you make the marks, the more you make the shapes, then things are gonna start to open up for you. And Kathy just said, leaves and hearts. <laughs> I'm not a big leaf person. I love leaves and I'm gonna talk about leaves and stuff tomorrow, but hearts are something I love to do too. I love, um, whenever I write, I always make a little heart. Whenever I'm writing a letter or a note or something, there's always a heart shape. And I like to have hearts in my art somehow. And usually they're like secret. They're like somewhere in there. They're not just like this shape. They're like a little two dabs in it together. So anyway, um, all right, you guys, it's 17 minutes. How's your tea? Isn't this pretty? Not a pretty tea cut. I'm gonna get going so I can feed those big boys. I love having them here. Oh my gosh, all of the big 19 year olds come over all the time. They were helping Mark out today. It's so much fun to have my, all my kids here. Oh, and next year, my last one's gonna go to college. So anyway, I'll be a mess on YouTube. I hope you guys have an awesome night and I will see you tomorrow, four o'clock tea time. All right, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.